And then the 2024 Internet 2 Technology Exchange is December 9th through 12th in Boston, Massachusetts. And then the online, the IAM online monthly webinar, the link for the monthly webinar is there. All right, next we have Grouper and Grouper information will be uh, presented by Jim Beer. All right, so for Grouper version four, uh, this is the kind of stable production branch. Uh, the, the latest stable release is 4.9.1. Uh, throughout the life cycle of version four, we've been seeing improvements in skim provisioning. Uh, there's been enhanced debugging and reporting in the user interface for provisioning events and for Jexel scripting. And we've also seen uh, improved documentation for the Google provisioners, uh, including a couple of movies uh, that Chris Heiser put together and put out on YouTube. And just as a reminder, when we moved from 2.6 to 4, uh, we had Java 17 uh, replace Java 8. We moved from Tommy to Tomcat, and there was a new provisioner framework that was put in place. Uh, for Gruber 5, uh, this is the branch that kind of focuses on new features. Uh, the latest stable release is 5.4. Uh, and we're seeing a lot of focus on scripted groups and attribute-based access control. Uh, Grouper 5 incorporates the updates for Grouper 4, just as a reminder. And the uh, release notes are available if you want to follow them. Uh, since Grouper 5 is the uh, feature enhancement branch, uh, it's a good idea to test very thoroughly as you upgrade. Um, it's more likely to see some bugs introduced with newer features. Uh, there are some deprecation warnings. Uh, extra applications have been removed from the base distribution. So things like uh, Apache, uh, the Shibboleth SP, and SOAP web services have been taken out. Uh, and the, the old provisioner framework has been deprecated. It's still in the release, but in future releases, it's going to go away. Uh, there's a, a roadmap available. Uh, folks want to see what's going on. Uh, some of the themes with version 5 include enhancements to Jexel scripting, uh, fundamental uh, underlying library updates, and they're looking at dynamic web services with open API. Uh, and as we start to plan for version 7, uh, they're looking for at group bulk operations, uh, optimizing the database layer, and providing performance diagnostics and metrics uh, in the user interface, uh, as well as updating the wiki documentation. Uh, since we've seen things like the SHIB uh, SP be removed, uh, we want to make you aware that there is an external authentication uh, kind of plugin available. Uh, there's a link to it there. Uh, it's a, a work in progress branch, but it should be functional. Uh, it provides a few different methods for authentication into the user interface, uh, including uh, SAML and OIDC. And now we have uh, some questions associated with Grouper. Okay, we'll, we'll leave a little bit of time to answer the, the two questions. All right, looks like everybody has participated that's going to. We'll go ahead and end this poll and go to our next topic, which is Shibboleth, which will be presented by Sean Forth and Mark McCoy. All right, good afternoon, everyone. The biggest thing to be aware of is that IDP version 4 is officially has an end of life date of September 1 next year. That's uh, a bit different from the usual, where it takes a couple years. So that's something everyone should be aware of. If you're not there yet, you really should. Uh, 4.31 is the last version 4 release. It primarily just contains security and bug fixes from the 4.3.0. And 4.3, I guess we should have changed that to uh, not will be, but is required prep for 5.0 due to the upgrade requirements 
you definitely have to get to 4.3 first. The biggest news is IDP5. It was released just September 13th, a couple months ago. Uh, this initial release has no new features. It's just a refactored code base. And a big part of that is an upgrade to Java 17 and Spring Framework 6. Other things to be worried about is, as you see, uh, upgrading to 5 also requires that you upgrade to Jetty 11 or Tomcat 10.1 at a minimum now because of the uh, Joblet servlet specification that IDP5 requires. And the other big news is that the traditional Duo plugin, which was you know the old non-universal uh, prompt, is not going to be ported to 5. And some people may still be using it if your MFA uh, code is, is doing any kind of the Duo pre-auth API that integration needs to be completely refactored for the new modules. So another thing you may have to keep in mind as far as timing for going to version five. And this is definitely one where you should read the upgrading notes because there's very specific uh, steps that have to happen to remove uh, artifacts from version three or version four, mostly system related files that will affect the upgrade itself. And not on here, because we just found out. Uh, just quick note is that SHIB 5.1 is uh, in development. It's primarily just going to have some changes to the uh, content security policy headers and basically headers in general. But there's no ETA on when that will be released. And absolutely nothing has changed with uh, the SP. It's, it's still stagnant at 3x, only uh, Security patches, they're still planning on doing a version four, but that was waiting on IDP five, but they still haven't given us an update as to uh, when they're gonna start working on this version. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, the Shibboleth IDP UI, uh, which is a, um, it's a web-based user interface that will you know, help you simplify uh, integrating new uh, service providers into your SHIB IDP. Um, and it also provides uh, delegated metadata management in the form of implementing the, the, the same uh, metadata query protocol that uh, in common uses for their, their metadata service. Um, so the, you know, this was, was originally designed uh, to be used, you know, specifically with Shibboleth because you can install it in kind of two ways. One, Kind of in line with your RDP, um, but also in kind of a standalone mode. And we've seen people using it in the standalone mode um, increasingly as a, a general purpose metadata management tool um, for you know for some other IDPs other than Shibboleth, which is which is very nice. So um, kind of where we were, uh, where we are now at the, here at the end of 2023, uh, you know, version 1.17.4. That's the current version. Um, over the course of 2023, we've you know, provi primarily provided uh, bug fixes to the, the version one uh, code base um, because we've been focusing on uh, the version two baseline, which is going to be in line with uh, SHIB IDP five. So uh, we've, you know, along with IDP five, we've made sure that uh, everything runs on Java 17, uh, uses the same spring versions and uses some, some of the same underlying libraries as IDP5 so that that way uh, it, it will start tracking IDP5 rather than three or four. Uh, we've seen um, institutions, uh, increasing numbers of institutions deploying it, um, uh, either they're in, uh, in production with it or they're, they're in the planning stages um, and some have, are in the consideration stages. So if you have any um, um, feedback about how we can kind of discuss how we can get you from the consideration to the planning stage, please, you know, please reach out to us. Um, and we're looking, uh, or IDP, uh, Internet2 is looking to rename the product. This actually just is a recent development here right at the end of the year um, because they have seen more people using it, again, as a, a general purpose tool as opposed to being specifically tied in with Shibboleth. So uh, they do want to re, you know, rename the product to kind of reflect that wider usage. Um, and so you'll see that announcements for that here fairly certain, fairly soon on the identity, uh, or excuse me, the I2, um, uh, you know, pages and things like that. Um, we do have community assistance available. 
So please, if you'd like to join the uh, Slack channel for In Common Shia by the uh, UI, uh, there's an email there, help at incommon.org. And you just send the subject, please add me to the Shib UI Slack channel. And then uh, you can reach out and there's community support available. And so any questions around uh, Shibboleth or Shib UI? Well, this will be our next poll um, question. All right. Looks like our responses have ended. We'll go ahead and end the poll and go to our next category, which is CAS, which is going to be presented by Dmitry Kopolenko. Uh, yes, thank you, Steve. Hello, everyone. Um, so as usual, I'll go over some items related to uh, the latest CAS server uh, developments. Um, and so the uh, current version of CAS is 6.6.14 with 6.6 uh, series is scheduled to go into the uh, security patch mode uh, on December 31st uh, of this year. And the full uh, end of life uh, for 6.6 uh, has been extended until the end of July of uh, next year. Um, and the next major release uh, is CAS 7. Uh, is scheduled to go into a GA mode uh, at the end of December, basically of this year in a couple of weeks. So let's finger crossed uh, that it goes to GA. Um, and let me continue uh, to review some of the new major features of CAS 7. Uh, so first, uh, CAS 7 has now switched to uh, Java 21 as a minimum baseline uh, required version. Uh, basically, all JDK distributions such as, you know, Amazon Coretto, Zulu, OpenJDK, etc., uh, uh, should work uh, with CAS. But again, it's uh, subject for, for more testing. And as a consequence of uh, supporting Java 21, uh, CAS 7 was able to switch internally to the latest uh, baseline Spring Framework 6.1 and sp latest Spring Boot uh, 3.2 versions, right? And building on top of that, uh, building on those framework versions, right? The CAS 7 now takes advantage of uh, Java 21's uh, uh, project loom, uh, also known as uh, virtual threads. So the support for virtual threads in CAS 7 is seamless uh, as CAS sets a default Spring Boot property uh, which enables them. So it should be transparent to a deployer other than, you know, knowing that the property is set. And so when virtual threads are enabled, uh, embedded Tomcat or JD will use them for internal web request processing, right? And that means basically that the scalability of uh, a web requests should improve uh, in theory, um, of course, uh, uh, and again, subject for uh, more uh, stress testing. Uh, and also CAS code base itself has made modest efforts uh, uh, wherever possible internally to use uh, virtual threads and uh, work uh, in this area will, will continue. And next slide, please. And also in this version, uh, Groovy uh, service access strategy uh, has been refactored to allow for uh, distinct uh, optional operations in the form of um, uh, concrete methods. Uh, please note though that this is a breaking API change and if such scripts are in use today, they would need to be uh, refactored during the upgrade process. Um, and for the next item, uh, CAS password management facilities are now able to intercept uh, users' passwords after uh, successful authentication attempts and evaluate their strength. Uh, if passwords are determined to be weak or insecure, uh, the authentication flow would uh, force users to update uh, or reset their passwords. Uh, and uh, for the next item, uh, the, also the structure of Groovy authentication policy scripts uh, has been updated uh, to allow access to a full authentication attempt data structure 
for a, a richer set of functionality. Uh, and also know that this is a breaking API change. And uh, if uh, uh, such scripts exist today, they would need to be uh, revisited uh, and refactored during the upgrade process. Uh, and last but not least, uh, this release brings uh, uh, lots of internal uh, code base refactoring, cleanup, and uh, the build system improvements. Um, so one example uh, as a result of this effort, about 33 megabytes of craft uh, has been removed from the uh, cache server, right? And final package binary artifacts such as uh, web application archive or known as CAS war is now leaner and more lighter weight. Um, and as usual, more uh, comprehensive list of features and all future releases are available in the release notes represented by the link uh, on the slide there. And, um, and as for sustaining engineering effort uh, regarding uh, CAS server, uh, the team has continued to put a heavy effort for uh, development of CAS server seven, as well as spending time to fix uh, existing bugs. Um, so here you could uh, see, for example, some of the bug fixes that landed in upstream CAS server, uh, like uh, setting HSTS options, uh, field correctly from the config, uh, skipping authentication interrupts if finalized and, and uh, you know, finalized in the flow and they do not repeat checks, uh, correctly locating entity ID sent by uh, a Shiba IDP from uh, service attributes if there is a Shiba IDP integration in place, uh, selecting correct service from requests prior to service registry lookup, and many, many more, of course. And um, with that, that's all I have for this brief uh, CAS server update. Thank you for your attention. And then we will have another poll. All right, it looks like everybody's gonna respond as responded. We'll end the poll and go to our midpoint presentation and it's presented by Paul Spout. All right. Hello, welcome everyone. So uh, Midpoint is an IDM product, um, open source product out of Revolvium, um, and is, has a lot of recent adoption in the various years in higher ed. Uh, the, the current release is 4.8. Uh, it's an LTS release. As you can expect from an LTS release or a long-term stable release, uh, the focus was not on new features, but on stability and security enhancements. Um, the whole 4X product line has been has had a lot of new features, which I'll go over here shortly, um, especially a lot of them tailored towards higher education. The latest feature release is 4.7. Um, obviously, that's superseded by 4.8. Um, so they have not released a 4.9 as of yet. That would be targeted for next year in the spring or, or October, uh, depending on when they get to it, likely October-ish um, time frame. And uh, both of these releases are supported for quite some time. Uh, 4.7 out to 2024, 20, and uh, the LCS up to 2028. 20, uh, uh, all others are technically unsupported um, at this time, uh, other than than um, like the 4.4 LTS for people upgrading and that sort of thing. Uh, we haven't seen a big deal with people upgrading. Um, it seems to be pretty straightforward and seamless uh, to go from like 4.4 to 4.8 or 4.6, or 4.7 to 4.8. Uh, next slide. So, so a lot of the new features in the point four eight are are under the hood, uh, but the, some of the things that you can see are UI updates. So there was a big rework in 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 four six ish time frame of the resource wizard in four seven, and then uh, that has even been updated further into four eight. Um, so there are ways, or, or there are a lot of ways now to add a resource and configure a resource. And edit a resource without even going with the XML anymore, which is what was their goal. Um, so that's that's really nice. Um, other visibility and diagnostic improvements um, in the UI in various places. Um, the big focus with 4.7 and 4.8 has been uh, governance improvements. So there are on um, all accesses view to see why someone has an access, similar to the grouper visualizer, although it's it's less uh, visual. 
um, but it shows why someone has the access that they have. Uh, then the, the biggest new feature that came in 4.7 timeframe was the simulations. And this was, uh, this is, they believe that, that uh, only, only Midpoint has this ability, but it's the ability to simulate an action on a resource and see what happens. And you sure you could do that for one item uh, before with the preview button, uh, or you could do a dry run on a task, but then you'd have to hunt through the log to figure out what was actually done. This gives you a much more visual way to see what was done, what errors might be generated, all that sort of thing before you make the change on the resource. Um, and there's a lot more. There's a lot of other features in there uh, that you could read about on the on their feature and their release notes. Um, and as expected, security and performance improvements on a on a LTS release. Next slide. Um, so one of the biggest things I guess I wanted to point out because there's a lot of interest out there. A lot of people already use flexible authentication with SAML two providers. Great, um, but there's been a lot of interest out there to use OIDC. Um, and until now, you couldn't do like multiple scopes and things like that. Um, so th they've added some enhancements there. Um, and there are a few clients out there using this. That's, that's really good. Um, smart correlation uh, also was added in the 4.6 timeframe, but it's been enhanced and things like that. Uh, it uses on the, on the back end Postgres-based fuzzy matching. Um, and, and there's other things in there that you can use, but um, it gives a lot of power to midpoint to to match people when they're not one-to-one, -one, right? So you have a mix of first, last, birth date, that sort of thing. Uh, and even fuzzy matching like Matt and Matthew, that sort of thing. Um, so check out those features if you think it's it's improvement. We see a lot of clients looking at, um, you know, they already do those things in, in like their ERP, such as Banner, for example, and other places. And um, they're kind of looking at midpoint to see if it can replace that. So that's a, a big thing that uh, people are looking at right now. You can template resources uh, so that common resources can be derived from the templates. Um, and it helps configure things so people don't have to select things and kind of give some consistency. Um, and there's a new midpoint query language. So if you're familiar with midpoint, it's primarily XML based um, with a scripting of Groovy, typically Groovy Java S uh, scripting. And uh, the old query language used XML. So there was ands and ors and there was filters and things. And uh, they have a new uh, query language built on Axiom-ish concept um, where it's just plain language. And so uh, check that out. Um, but the new 4.8, the query playground now fully supports that and only accepts that. Um, and you have a converter that converts the XML to the newer style. Uh, next slide. So removals and deprecations. Um, 21 is recommended, but you can use J Java 17 or 11. Um, most people that have upgraded to 4.8 have gone 17 or 21 because it's quite easy, especially if you're in containers. Um, post query, uh, so the biggest thing that you might have to change though typically for, um, is the database and, and they're on six, version 16. Um, so simulation, smart correlation, and a lot of those other new features only work on Postgres and only work on the later versions that are listed here, um, 16 and 15, I think. Um, and so that, that's the, because they're built on database features, um, you just want to make sure that you're upgrading the database as well. I know there are several that are on the old generic repository, which could have been Oracle, could have been MySQL. You won't even be able to use these features until you go to what they call native or Postgres upgrades. So, uh, they haven't mandated it yet. You know, they said they might on this version. But it's very strongly suggested to get onto Postgres when you upgrade to 4.8 if you if if you want if you're not already on there. Um, uh, another thing to point out, uh, part of the community, UT Austin uh, funded some password management uh, enhancements. Uh, you could read about it. There's a there's a feature thing and there's some other things. Um, but anyway, security policy was reworked as a result of that. Also, some other things that they've been doing, um, as I mentioned with the YDC and other things. So just note that if you already have midpoint deployed, your security policy is going to have to have a little bit of updates. It's not too terrible, along with your system config, which is always there. Uh, that's always being updated, especially with the new UI. So security policy and system configuration objects, you need to merge the new enhancement for the new versions into yours or update your changes into the new versions, however you want to do it. 
Um, that's like the biggest task of the upgrade. Um, and then there's post initial ob object upgrades or actually initial object upgrades, which are like task archetypes that you need to run. And the Ninja command line tool uh, makes upgrades quite a bit easier. Uh, you could check it out um, or contact Unicon you know, if you need some help. Uh, another thing that they did was they changed personnel number. I just put it out here because it wasn't, I mean, it's in the release notes quite big, but um, you know, I just want people to point it out is that we're using employee number for various things. Um, it's technically deprecated and it's still there, but you can use it, but you're supposed to use personal number. So just keep that in mind as, as you're upgrading uh, in future versions. And then there's uh, in the resources, there's been legacy. Sim so every synchronization you've probably done in a resource is probably legacy right now. Um, and 4.6 introduced that smart correlation. And, in, and within that, um, the synchronization got reworked and to be a little bit cleaner and easier to, to look at. And um, anyways, long story short, legacy synchronization is deprecated. Uh, it'll still work, but it won't work with it like in the GUI. So if you go into the GUI and you go into synchronization, you won't be able to change or modify anything because you have the legacy. Um, so either you just redo it with the, the, the new GUI and then you're golden, or you convert it manually into the new format and uh, you'll be good there. Uh, next slide. Uh, new connectors have uh, are, are always being updated and upgraded, and we got a, quite a few on this version. Um, you know, as a result, so uh, LDAP connector has three seven, so um, that's seen a couple jumps now. I think it was three three, and now it's three four, five six, and seven. And a lot of those are AD or Active Directory enhancements, but there are other enhancements in there. Database table is one five one zero. That's had a couple enhancements just to reduce errors. It still doesn't support all database types out there like the, um, that you might have like UID and things like that. Um, but it, it does support a lot of a large majority of things. And those are only rare edge cases, right? You can still bring them in a string. So um, it, it, it's gotten a lot of improvements. CSV is updated to 2.7. Not much to talk about there. It's just updates and enhancements, I believe, in the Polygon framework. Uh, Java connector server updates. Um, that's That's the remote. Um, uh, connector idea where you can run a connector on a server that doesn't, you know, you don't have access on midpoint. Let's say it's a CSV file on a remote server, and then uh, you can uh, bring those changes in. And um, then they had changes to kind of ideas I mentioned, and Tomcat uh, is updated to 10, 1, 12. I always, I'm starting to put that in here now because everyone asks, okay, what version of Tomcat are we on? Remember, this, midpoint uses the Spring Boot now. And it uses the embedded Tomcat. Um, that's the preferred method of deploying it. Um, standalone is not supported, uh, especially with some security uh, vulnerabilities in the recent years. Next slide. Okay, and we will have a poll question for Midpoint. All right, and it looks like we've got all of our responses. Go ahead and end this poll, and then go to our Navigate Identity presentation with Laura Ketley. Uh, thanks, Steve. Uh, so thanks, everybody, for joining this OSS briefing. Um, one of the things I'd like to briefly chat to you about is how we're taking our open source support um, to kind of a next level. Um, so what is Navigate Identity? So this is an offering that we have uh, where we're going to be um, hosting and managing the infrastructure and supporting these open source applications on AWS. Uh, we already support um, Shibboleth IDP in the cloud, uh, so that's nothing new on our side, but we're going to be starting to host and manage Midpoint and Grouper applications. Uh, so who is this for? Um, in particular, it's for um, higher ed institutions that are interested in migrating to cloud, who want to modernize and, um, and sunset any legacy systems, and are looking to implement um, Midpoint and Grouper. Um, the main benefits um, in terms of using Navigate is, um, um, as with any identity and access management department, um, it is vital to have a centralized view of your access management um, and providing you additional control of governance admin and administration. 
Um, so the goal of Navigate Identity is so that you can focus on your core business functionality, whereas we will take care of the um, foundational infrastructure and application support. Um, you will have access to cloud and identity experts, um, exactly as you do um, through open source support, and there are no um, additional license fees. So that's just um, the tip of the iceberg in terms of what Navigate can do for you. Um, if you're interested in learning more about it, uh, please reach out to anyone at Unicon and we will make sure um, we in initiate the right conversation um, with your institution. Thank you. All right, thank you, Flora. And we do have time for some questions. We'll check and see what we had in chat. All right, uh, doesn't seem like it. So we appreciate everybody attending today's presentation. And this will this presentation has been recorded. And it also will go out on. Uh, Unicon's YouTube site here in the near future. So thank you once again for everybody to attend and go ahead and end the uh, presentation.